Well, greetings friends and welcome back. Today we're having a look at the Diamondback Explorer, but you already know that. What you may not know is that in this video, because it's an exploration ship, I'm also going to show you what the galaxy map looks like, what the system map looks like, what a hyperspace tunnel looks like looking out the back of the ship, and various other things that you don't really get to see in Pancake version, so stay tuned. And on that, if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button. It's one click for you, means the world for me. Thank you very much. Let's get on with it. So as you know, in Hollow Me, you get transported all around the ships to different locations for the Hollow Me to actually take place. So if we materialize our commander in front of us, I want to show you something interesting. First of all, from close up, I just want to show you how well this thing is rendered. Like, that is some amazing detail, especially on the eyes and the reflections. Really cool. So there's Commander Head Full. Commander Headless is sitting over there. But I think one thing that you don't really realize is that in 2D, when you click on your uh, head accessories, watch where the head appears in VR. Now, the first time I did this, I nearly lost my lunch because uh, you can see how close that commander's head actually is to you uh, when you're actually sitting in the, for want of a better word, hollow me chair. So that is uh, totally freaky and disconcerting and I just wanted to run around and show it to you, including the little graphical glitches underneath from an angle that you don't really ever get to see unless you're crawling around on the floor like a ninny. One thing that's interesting that you probably didn't notice is that uh, in Hollow Me, those screens are actually blank, which is really odd. Uh, let's just go back to Hollow Me for a second. Yeah, so you see the screen over here has completely switched off and gone black. I think it's like a black cover over the front of the screen actually because it's not even shiny it's just a, a matte black and then if you swap back to the normal view you can see that now the screens are not only displaying stuff but they're also shiny so it seems like they're sort of covered by some weird matte finish for when you're in hollow me which is I don't know it's a bit strange I guess so personally, I think more than any other ship, the Diamondback Explorer suffers from issues with scale. And uh, there's a few reasons for that, and I'll show you that in a second. So I've aligned myself so that I'm standing pretty much on the floor. Here would be the back of the commander's chair here. And here is where they, their head would sit if they had one. Sorry, Commander Headless. But for all of you who have looked at this place in 2D, you will have seen these grab handles up here. Now they look like human sized single hand grab handles, but they are far from it. In fact, firstly, I'd have to reach up this far to actually grab it. And secondly, the grab handle is about that long and about that wide. So certainly that is something that ruins the perspective uh, as far as I'm concerned as well. Same thing with the grab handles down here near the dash. Uh, the hand part itself is definitely big enough to fit two hands in. So this certainly combined makes this feel like it's a small cockpit, but in actual fact, it is gigantic. So we'll start as always with a quick run around of the digital displays. This one here is about the size of a dinner plate as per normal. And this screen over here is about the size of a small laptop screen, just like the previous ships. Now we'll just duck down and start over here. So there is some sort of a thing that says danger, different voltages exist which is interesting. And I quite like the ghetto way that this thing is rigged up with wires going everywhere. And we'll get a closer look at some of those later on. But here you can see some wires strapped together going up and under this plating. And then they mysteriously change color. <laughs> That's interesting, I never noticed that before. So they're gray and <laughs> gray and yellow coming here. And then they change to red and black coming out there. Presumably a serial number on that one and a warning up there that is too low res to read, at least in VR. Some more writing up there that I'll get to in a second. Down here, we have what appears to be some sort of a slider. I don't know whether that's for the ventilation maybe to allow more or less air in this. Maybe it looks like a bit of a ventilation shaft. I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be actually. You can uh, decide that for yourself. Some three blue LEDs down here, maybe some openable panels there and some sort of a canister, which I can't read. Moving further, there's some maybe plugs or dials there. And then what looks like some ashtrays, which is always handy for a spaceship. Another key thing is obviously, let me get on the ground here, 
is that you can see through the vents down there into the wiring that's uh, just hidden inside the floor. And there's just a big mess of wiring. And I quite like that about this ship. It sort of gives it a organic, lived in, half mended sort of feel. Now the other problem with the main dash is if you watched my ASP Explorer video linked above, you will see how big these dashes are in the lake on ships. But this one is slightly smaller than the ASP Explorer one, but bizarrely, it's actually been stretched this way. And I'm not sure if you can see that, especially with these rivets here. So they're supposed to be circular. And you can see over here, they're very clearly and oval. So I'm not sure why they did that, obviously to try and fit it into this space, but that combined with all the other stuff makes the scale of this ship specifically quite janky. And if we duck down here and look at the front, it says caution, exposed moving parts can cause severe injury. And what appears to be some manual override sliders or something or other. And you can see that it just sort of out ends there. And then you can see the ground past it. And underneath the front dash is fairly plain, just made out of your generic textured sort of plastic material and a bit of a mess of wiring there. Uh, again, indicating some, probably some jerry rig fixing at some point or another by the commander. And down here is a fire extinguisher, about two feet in length. The holographic projector here in the front is about, oh, about 60 by 60 centimeters. Obviously it's, it's a square and it's got that same mesh pattern as the Asp Explorer. So it doesn't exactly look like a holographic emitter, but well, we don't, they don't exist. So who knows what they look like. Over here, we have a bit of a display panel, which is not usable or not being used at the moment, certainly. And some reflecting -y sort of materials. I quite like this ship as well, because like the Viper, it is sort of a little bit beaten up a little bit space worn and um, not all that well maintained, which is actually, you know, in line with these ships and how they're used in real life. Well, I say in real life, you know what I mean? Over here, we have the old keyboard based on the BBC Micro from 1980 something or other, which is a, always a fascinating factoid for me and included, of course, your um, CF card and SD card readers <laughs> in the top there for who knows why. And a repeat of the box from the other side, which on this side though, out, doesn't have um, the warning for the different voltages. Further back, we have the standard Lacon screen, which is exactly the same as in the Asp Explorer, pretty much down to every minute detail. And it says exactly the same things as that one. Over here, a small display talking about uh, core schematics and signatures, presumably a power plant situation. And down here we have a couple of little access boxes with a reverse serial number. Whoopsie. Another one of these gigantic grab handles. This one's actually slightly better in terms of scale, but uh, certainly you could fit two hands around it quite easily. And then we come to the standard lake on door, which uh, says closed during flight mode, maybe open and close in a keypad, a little access panel down there and lake on bulkheads written on it. On the other side, we have that same panel that we saw many times repeated in the Asp Explorer, this time actually aligned properly. And you can have a look at what it says there. It talks about system calibration and cargo and coolants and all sorts of things. So certainly an interactable panel. Those buttons are about finger size. So they're pretty much correct, like, like a sort of tough book kind of display and a repeat of the standard sort of CRT display from the other side over here, along with a very small first aid kit and a repeat of the fire extinguisher, uh, again, about a foot and a bit in width. So seeing as though we're at the back and we're near the door, we uh, may as well head on through it, shall we? <laughs> now, the Diamondback Explorer is weird, if you haven't realized that already. There's some very strange graphical stuff going on in here with these bizarre interior panels which seem to show some lighting. I don't know whether this is a leftover texture or it was always supposed to be here, but kind of cool to see the underside or the inside of something lit up so well and textured. Obviously you see those from the outside, but not from the inside. So through here you see the hard points, which actually in this ship take up a great majority of this space that's actually in here. You can see it's pretty much full of the hard points down there, but the cargo bay through the back would allow you to have access and sort of walk around in above the hard points, presumably in the living areas and whatnot. 
In terms of the landing gear, there is no access via the front landing gear. And we'll see that retract in a second when I take off. But you see it's pretty hefty, probably a story and a half in height. So it's actually lower or th shorter, I should say, than some of the other landing gears that you will see in the other ships. But certainly still very hefty. And that the circumference of that top uh, main strut is about uh, two feet in diameter. Not circumference, diameter. And through there on the sides of the engines you can also see some more bizarre texturing which again looks like it's a leftover from something else it's not quite as lit as the ones underneath there but certainly it seems like a texture that doesn't really belong and is more of a placeholder or in fact belongs on the interior of some other part of the ship i'm not really sure what's going on there and then the large engine at the rear which from here to the engine is approximately 20 to 25 meters I would say and looking back into the cockpit from this vantage point so you have those front angles which are more prominent on the outside of the ship and then the door while the tracking has a fit that you would obviously head on through to get back into the cockpit and this is where you would find the commander's chair and so just for the sake of completeness and curiosity let's have a look under the uh, actual main deck where the chair is and you can see that it goes back a fair bit there and is uh, textured a fair bit to, um, to about just under the commander's chair where it sort of loses texture. Well, it's actually still the same texture, but it's just sort of become a bit squished. Again, there's no point actually doing this properly because you're never supposed to see it. And here's the texture over here sort of squished out again underneath the deck area. So yeah, areas that you're not, never supposed to see. There's a bit of a graphical glitch there in the corner. Again, because you're never supposed to see it, are you? And there's a better look there at the wires that are through those vents. All right, so again, in terms of scale, if I was to sit here, you can see I've got auto launch ready to go out of Siebel port. So if I was to get up out of my seat, run into the blinds, and then walk over here, <laughs> you would see how far I need to walk to actually get through the bulkhead and then uh, continue on into the main part of the ship. Now we're going to watch those engines as they move as we take off and the gear retracts because I think this is one of the coolest ships and what it does when it takes off is pretty rad. Well that is kind of interesting because clearly it doesn't actually move in the way that it does in pancake version when you're in VR. Hmm, fascinating. You can see we're exiting a high tourist starport and we will be back here because uh, for the tourist ships, the Orca and Beluga, I'm going to definitely be back in this starport to uh, get the real feel for tourism. Obviously in space you can see those glowing panels, that weird graphic again quite clearly and especially over here. Now if we pop on our EVA suit and uh, stick our faces out of this cockpit, you'll actually see where those glowing parts come into play. So you can see there that it is potentially a combination of an actual physical light and the graphic that we saw on the underside uh, from the inside of the door that sort of creates that lighting effect that happens uh, next to the panels, which I think is really cool. A very excellent looking effect, but uh, an interesting out low level graphic that you don't ever get to see uh, from that perspective. So. And obviously the same happens over there on the top. And while this is obviously not a combat ship, it does have its fair share of armaments. And if we deploy those, you can see them pop out, especially that large one down there, which looks intense. And so from the rear of the ship, you can see the cargo scoop opens up there. And that's a good sort of five by five meters that it actually comes out in this configuration, which is quite a large scoop. And what I was talking about, obviously you've all seen this, but as the landing gear deploys on the Diamondback Explorer, it's supposed to move up and away as it retracts, which obviously it didn't do in the VR version, which was quite interesting. Now that engine is very large. I'm sure that you've gathered that already. It's probably a good sort of three meters in diameter, I would say. So uh, 10 feet maybe, it is quite a substantial engine and they're all sort of the same size. The ship itself is probably four storeys high, similar to the Asp Explorer. And it's probably quite hard to see from here, but as I walk up this way, you can see some more of those graphics with the glowing undersides of panels just there between the engine and the hull itself. 
again created by a combination of textures and actual environmental lights, which is a really cool effect. I wish they did that on more ships, actually. Now, most things in ED and VR are obviously pretty strange, but the Galaxy map is certainly no exception. <laughs> where you can walk around and uh, look at the stars, which uh, whilst that text is actually fading, the size of those letters, they're about that high in real life. And the size of the star that's represented there is about, you know, a basketball shape. So certainly uh, the galaxy map as well is really weird. And the system map is no exception, depending on how far you zoom in or out. And behind you, if you ever wondered, is just completely black and <laughs> Well, it's actually quite a bit disturbing, and the blacker it is, the more of a void it looks. Um, and over here you can see the planets, and if you obviously look down the solar system, this is actually Sol. Uh, you can have a bit of an interesting view about what that looks like as well. So we're going to plot a route to Mars High, and the other reason for that is because I wanted to show you what the back of a hyperspace tunnel looks like when you actually fire it off into space. So there you go, the rear of a hyperspace tunnel has seen pretty much never because uh, even the exterior camera doesn't let you actually look at it from this direction. And equally another interesting uh, heads up display situation with the speed that you can see everything moving past you in Super Cruise. So if you step outside of the ship you can see that that heads up display is actually projected a good meter and a half out in front of the ship coming towards you with those lines indicating speed, which again is quite interesting. So what about the side of the hyperspace tunnel then? So it's actually a reasonably narrow tunnel. It uh, probably extends another 10, maybe 20 meters outside of the ship itself, but not too much further than that, which is sort of quite interesting, unexpected. It seems much larger. Uh, in the 2D version, but uh, there you go. Now finally, I did promise to look at what it says up here above the commander's seat. So you can see there it says drive unit system, diagnosis maybe, bunch of numbers that looks like an IP address, communications relay tested, communication system online, cargo upload interface, and something else. So whether those are the interior uh, systems that allow you to talk to um, various parts of the ship or something. Uh, yeah, maybe that's uh, as good a guess as any. The other thing that you might find interesting is where the Super Cruise Assist and various other uh, heads-up display elements actually live. So it sort of sits right about there and the commander's head is right about there. So it's probably only a foot and a half away from that actual projection. Well friends, that'll do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed having a look at the Diamondback Explorer and those few little extra things like the galaxy map and system map and stuff. If you haven't subscribed as yet, please hit the subscribe button. It helps me a huge amount. It's only a little click for you, so surely that quid pro quo can work. And I'll see you in the next one at Mars High with the next ship. See you then. Fly safe, commanders.